Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. You are listening to TK's Two Cents, and this is TK Coleman. Today, we're going to talk about avoiding cults and rising above labels. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. There are cult-like subcultures in every demographic. Recognize them and rise above them. Indoctrination and groupthink is just as dangerous when it's endorsed by your preferred communities. Now, communities are a part of life. Communities are simply places or spaces where you can connect with individuals that relate to you or resonate with you on some level. You might be a religious person and you have a church that you attend. You might be someone who goes to the gym two to three days a week and you connect with the people that are there and you talk about things that you have in common. You might be a part of clubhouse groups or you might be part of a women's study group or a black entrepreneurship group. Whatever it whatever it may be, you don't have to be someone who is, you know, a collectivist or whatever it may be in order to understand the role that community plays in our lives. We all have interest. We all have priorities. We all have goals. We all have habits. We all have taste. And we all tend to move in and out of various communities or groups of individuals who share things in common with us. We move in and out of these communities as a part of life. And communities, just like individuals, some are more satisfying than others. You will find yourself having a better time in some communities or some communities relating to you a lot more than other communities. And when you find preferred communities that you tend that tend to build you up and nourish you, it can be easier to let your guards down and have a harder time being critical of the flaws in those communities. Because the closer we are to a community, the more we identify with the community, the more it feels like a criticism of that community is a criticism of ourselves. And one of the healthiest things that you can do is develop the habit of pushing yourself to be conscious of the flaws in the communities that you enjoy. Why? Because we automatically do that with the communities that we don't enjoy. Think of it at the level of individuals. If it's a person that you don't like, easy to criticize them. If it's a person that you really, really like, it's a lot more difficult. It's a lot more delicate to criticize them. Ditto for communities. I say this because you see it a lot in political discussions or religious discussions where we complain about things like compliance or dishonesty or manipulation or backtracking or breaking promises. But then we tend to turn a blind eye towards those very things when they come from someone that's on our team, someone that's in our party, someone that is from our group or someone that we voted for. An intellectual dishonesty demands that we be willing to criticize everyone and anyone, including ourselves, including our own communities. Why is this important to you? Because everything that matters in life depends on you being a critical thinker and a creative thinker. And that means you must be committed to a life of non-conformity. There's a difference between conformity and commonality. Commonality means that you have some things in common with other people. You don't need to go out of your way to be different. As long as you are being true to yourself, whatever you do is fine within the boundaries of what is ethical and nonviolent. But to be a conformist is to be someone who at the expense of your core, at the expense of your convictions, you do things to fit in. You can never realize your potential in life or make a powerful difference in the world if you are being a conformist. So you must be a critical thinker. You must be a creative thinker. You must be willing to question assumptions and think outside the box. You must be willing to disagree with people. You must be willing to stand alone. You must be willing to challenge people. You must be willing to question people. And your ability to do this depends on you stepping back from your communities and saying, I love my communities. I'm grateful for my communities. I appreciate my communities, but I am not above criticizing them because the only way I'm going to make my communities better is by being willing to take challenges to those communities and speaking truth to the people in those communities, even when it seems inconsistent with the reasons why we all love and like each other in the first place. Indoctrination is a reality. 
Groupthink is a reality. And no matter how you identify yourself, black person, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Christian, Muslim, or anything else, one thing you can be sure, there are demographics within that demographic of people who have allowed themselves to become so comfortable in what they believe that they don't question things anymore. You got to recognize those people and you got to be willing to rise above them. A cult is not merely a standalone place or a standalone group that you can join. There are many cults in every single demographic, including the communities that you love. Avoid them. Be willing to stand alone, even in the communities that you identify with. Let's go to tweet number two. You're not defined by other people's labels and expectations. You're defined by your willingness to evolve beyond them. The phrase be yourself is kind of a tricky phrase because there is a sense in which it's absolutely necessary that you be true to what you really think and what you really want if you're going to be happy, successful, or live meaningfully. But the flip side to that is being yourself isn't always a good thing if the way you're being is unhealthy, if the way you're being is less than what you are capable of being. And so when we think about the self in the phrase, be yourself, we have to think about that in two ways. We have to think about those aspects of yourself that are working for you right now, but we also have to think about those aspects of your potential self that remain undeveloped. You have a capacity for a greater sense of humor. You have a capacity to exhibit more strength and self-control. You have a capacity to be healthier. You have a capacity to make improvements in your ability to communicate and your ability to exercise influence. You have the capacity to develop new skills, to learn new things about the world. Those are parts of your potential self. And to be yourself not only means be true to what is good about you right now, but it also means be true to the person that you are that you know you are capable of being by challenging yourself to get better. So what that means is that when people give you when people assign labels to you, when people expect things from you, that's usually based on your past. It's usually based on your demonstrated behavior, on your track record, on your reputation. And what you have to remember is that you are always capable of becoming more than that. When people say, yeah, we trust you to do X or we believe that you will achieve Y, it's usually based on what you have already shown them. But there is so much more to you than what you have already shown people. There is so much more to what you're capable of learning, to what you're capable of doing than what is defined by your past. So never let other people's labels and expectations be the end all be all of how you are understood in this world. Always surprise people. Always have something about yourself that you are learning or developing so that you can show the world more than what the world expected of you. You get to decide who you are in this world. The most fundamental freedom that you have is the freedom to decide how you want to think, how you want to live, and what you want to pursue. Never let those things be controlled by anyone other than yourself. That's it, y'all. That's how you avoid cults. And that's how you rise above labels. I appreciate you tuning in. If you are listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment. If you're listening on uh, video, be sure to let me know if there are any topics that you want me to talk about in the future. Feel free to share your additional thoughts. Feel free to share this with a family member or a friend if you believe they will benefit from hearing it. I appreciate you tuning in to TK's Two Cents. Don't ever stop fighting for your personal freedom in every area of life. Peace out, y'all.